They're calling it the great resignation of 2021. Up to 40% of the workforce has realized that working for somebody else sucks and you could potentially make a whole lot more money and have a whole lot more free time being your own boss. So with that said, I'm starting a series called Business Lessons I've Learned the Hard Way, where I'm gonna be sharing the business lessons I've had to learn the hard way so you don't have to. And the very first video of this series is gonna be covering the single biggest mistake I made when starting my own small business. But before I tell you about the mistake that nearly bankrupted my law firm, I wanna put an emphasis on the word lesson. I'm not a gazillionaire, I'm not a guru, I'm not trying to sell you a course, and I certainly don't have it all figured out. These are just things that I've had to go through personally, and I'm sharing them so somebody earlier on in the business owning process might not have to go through them to learn from my mistakes. On top of that, I'm hopeful that somebody further along in the business owning process might see a flaw or a mistake in my video and offer some constructive criticism because I'm always trying to learn and get better. So with that said, lesson one, nobody gives a about your office. As many of you know, I'm a catastrophic personal injury lawyer, meaning I work on some of the biggest claims in the entire country. And I started my law firm when I was 24 years old. And when I was starting my law firm, overwhelmingly, I got a pessimistic sentiment from the legal community. All of my colleagues said something to the effect of, nobody's going to hire a 24 year old kid. So I felt this overwhelmingly negative energy and I so desired to be successful, I felt like I needed to overcompensate for my youth by having a nice office. You see, before I hired my first employee, before I had my first client, before I made my first dollar, I signed a five year lease to this place. And all in, this place runs me about $4,500 a month. So $54,000 a year or $270,000 throughout the entire course of this lease. And I probably only use about 30% of this office. Notice how this room is vacant? Me too. But hey, at least I have this cool standing desk. Okay, so let me set the stage for you. I'm 24 years old. I just signed this huge office space. I don't even have an employee yet. So for the first month, it's just me inside of this huge office. I only have about 12 months of runway capital, meaning I need to start making money fast or else I'm in big trouble. And as a result, I was forced to take smaller cases with a quicker turnover time and cases outside of my area of focus just in order to pay the monthly bills. If I didn't sign such a huge lease, I would have had two or three years of runway capital and could have focused exclusively on my bigger catastrophic personal injury cases. Now, to be fair to myself, I didn't let all this office space just go to waste. Throughout the duration of my lease, I've had three subtenants here. Some have been here for over a year and are still here, and some were here just for a couple of months while they were transitioning in between offices. But at the end of the day, I am the one on the hook for the lease for all five years of it. So when office space is not being used, like this office right here or the last office I showed you, I am on the hook for it. And it is definitely not a good business practice to sign a lease and just assume you're going to get subtenants because that is very, very hard and difficult to do. So while reflecting about this huge mistake I made, I was thinking why I decided to get such a big office space to begin with. And ultimately it came down to one room, the lobby. <laughs> You see, the smaller offices I was looking at did not have a lobby, and I knew I wouldn't need that much office space, but I felt like a lobby was necessary to close the deal because I was the 24 year old. I needed the nice office space with a lobby so clients could feel that I was legitimate. The only problem with that plan is no clients ever come into the office. Yes, ma'am, I do think we can help out. Okay, I wanna set up a meeting at my office over the next couple of days. I want you to meet me, I want you to meet my team. I wanna go over everything with you in person and we will get started on your matter immediately. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. 
you don't want to come in, I'll just, I'll send you the DocuSign. Okay. Uh, yeah, I understand you don't want to come in. Okay. All right. Bye. And my staff and I have counted. We've only ever had two people ever come into our office for a consultation. Two. So now when potential clients call, this is how I talk to them. Sending you over the DocuSign right now. Once you sign it, we can get started and working on your case immediately. Unless you want to meet in person over the next couple of days and go over everything. Yeah, no, th that's what I thought. Okay, just take care of the DocuSign. Let me know if you have any questions and call me whenever you need me. So if anybody is watching this thinking of starting a business, please learn from me. This isn't Field of Dreams. You're not Kevin Costner. If you build it, they will come is bullshit. In business, it's they come and then you build it. Originally, I had a conference table right here. This is where I would meet my clients in my own office, the biggest office in this entire suite. But like I said, nobody came. So I converted this office to my YouTube studio but I don't even use this YouTube studio even more because I like to film better from home. And y'all listen, I know it's not one size fits all. I'm a lawyer. A lawyer is a service-based industry in which the client doesn't need to be with you to perform that service. 99% of the work a lawyer does can be done at home so long as you have an internet connection and a computer. If you're a restaurant owner or a dentist, you need a space where people will come in and consume your product or services. So the idea of the office is kind of a metaphor. For instance, if you're a professional content creator or want to be a content creator, you might not need the most fancy gear right away. Start out small and build up towards it. This office nearly bankrupted my firm. $54,000 a year. It was so stupid of me to sign this lease. Just because my business is at a point in its life now where it can afford to pay the monthly rent without really too much worry doesn't mean that it's the highest and best use of funds. I could literally think of a thousand better ways off the top of my head to spend the $4,500 a month. And you can be rest assured when my five-year lease ends, I will not be renewing this big office. I'm going to be downsizing or I might not even get an office at all. I might go completely remote for me and my staff. So to conclude, having a nice office or having a nice camera or having a top of the line piece of equipment will not make or break your business. Clients want to work with people they trust and they trust people whether or not they work out of their home or the fanciest office building in the city. And I have learned from my mistake. About eight months ago, I opened up my first satellite office in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And when I opened up this office, I decided to joint venture a number of my cases with a local law firm there. And in exchange, they gave me some office space in their building for free. So my staff in Lake Charles works in an office building for free, and it makes all the difference. So please, anybody who is watching this video, if you're thinking about starting your own business, keep your overhead as low as possible. In hindsight, I probably should have named lesson one, keep your overhead low. It's a lot broader and more inclusive, but hey, that's not really a clickbaity title. Everybody could deduce that right from the beginning. And I have to keep you watching the video for YouTube. Bruh. If you want a more detailed conversation about how I overcame the age issue when talking to potential clients when I was 24 and just started a law firm, well, that's going to be the subject of the next video. So make sure you subscribe. All right, y'all, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. My goal is to always make content worthy of your time. Until next time. Bye. This is one of my favorite pointless rooms in the office at the moment. This is the conference table that was originally in my office where the YouTube studio was, where I would potentially meet clients. And originally, this room was filled with these file cabinets, eight of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in a printing station right there. And that's because when I was designing this office, every law firm that I had worked for in the past had a proper file cabinet room because all the law firms I worked for in the past were run by boomers. And old people love paper. Law firms love printing paper. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna need a file cabinet room as well. Well, guess what? 
My law firm is completely paperless. We don't print anything. If we print something and sign it and scan it, it then becomes digital and we shred it anyway. We don't use the file cabinet room at all. This room is one of the many wastes of this office space. And nobody wants to sublet it because why would you? There are no windows in this office space. Now, to be clear, because I'm pretty sure my landlord watches some of my videos, this has nothing to do with my landlord. My landlord actually gave me a great deal. And the furniture you saw, given to me by the landlord to furnish my office space, which probably saved me another $50,000. My landlord has been more than generous in even allowing me to sign the lease. He probably took a big chance on a 24-year-old kid having that liability. So this is nothing against the landlord. This is all just my personal mistake in signing the lease in the first place when my law firm had zero cash flow.